Hey everyone, Guy from Midwinter Minis here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint up the Chaos Ogryn, part of the Traitor Command expansion pack for Blackstone Fortress. Just a quick note before we get painting. When you assemble the model, try to be very careful when pushing the elements together, as those spiky Chaos bits sticking out of his torso are pretty fragile. I gently scraped away the obvious mould lines, just like in the other videos, but there are some areas on the model that would benefit from a little gap filling with putty. I'm super lazy though, so I didn't bother. The first step after adding any basing elements you want on the model is to prime it black. A black model on a black background. I didn't really think this through. Next, use a grey rattle can spray to catch the model from the top down, spraying at about a 45 degree angle to catch the top and sides while leaving the underside mostly black. I then used a white spray aimed directly down from the top of the model to add a zenithal white highlight. These few steps add a little bit of cheaty pre-shading that will help us make the paint job faster and make the shading seem a bit more natural. Once your primer is dry, thin your khaki tan colour with a little water I'm using Xandri Dust by Citadel in this case, and paint all the areas of exposed flesh, even the mutated claw. Be quick and messy at this first step. You can see that because of the way the paint is thinned nicely, the skin on the top facing surface is much more vibrant than the darker skin on the chest. Use this colour to paint the tusks on the mask too. While you're waiting for that to dry, paint the trousers with green. I wasn't too sure where the boots started and the trousers ended on this sculpt as it doesn't really have a very clear line, but I fixed this up with black later. Use your brown paint to paint the straps around his wrist, his belt and the pouch on his back. Your tan and green colours will probably still be wet on your palette, so don't be afraid to touch up mistakes as you go if you need to. To start building up your flesh tones early, I mixed a tiny bit of red paint with a lot of water and used this thin wash to tint the claw and any of the gross bits of skin. I added a little bit of purple to that thin red wash and used that to add a bit more depth to the crabby bits. While you're waiting for that thin wash to dry, we'll use our black paint to paint the rim and surface of the base and any debris you added, as well as the Ogryn's boots. Don't be afraid to thin the black paint out with a little water to help it flow smoothly and to get into all the recesses. To give the metallic parts a bit more of a uniform undercoat, I painted them black too. So the baton, the chaos spiky bits, the gas tank and pipe, the shoulder plates and the mask. This can be messy work, so again, don't be afraid to fix mistakes as you go. It doesn't have to be perfect as we'll be adding more layers later. I wanted the purpley colour to be a bit more pronounced on the claw, so I made another very watered down purple wash, about 5 drops of water to one drop of paint and tinted the claw again. While we're waiting for that to dry, we'll use our dry brush to apply some faint grey highlights to the boots, gas pipe and debris. Staying with the dry brush, I mixed an ivory off-white with half and half white paint and the original khaki we used for the skin, and dry brushed that over the skin, leather areas and trousers. Now the messy dry brushing is out of the way, we'll thin our silver paint slightly with water to help it flow, and paint it onto all of the metallic elements. You can take your time a little bit with this, and try your best not to get it on the flesh or trousers. No big deal if you do though, as we can fix it later. For some finishing touches before the wash stage, I added some red to the cable on the baton, and some white to the eyes with my detail brush. So here's how the Ogryn looks after about 40 minutes of painting, and now it's ready for the wash stage. First we'll use our brown wash to shade all over the fleshy bits, the trousers and the leather parts.
Take a quick break, and once it's dry, use your black wash to shade all of the metal and black areas. As you wait for the washes to dry, use some of your black paint to reinforce the base and rims of the model. And there we go! At just 49 minutes of hands-on painting time, the speed paint for the Chaos Ogryn is done. Now before I show you some slightly more advanced steps, a huge thanks to Andy at 40k, Alan, Andrew, Daniel, Richard and Alex for their kind donations to our PayPal jar since the last video. The generosity of awesome people like them means I don't monetize these videos, so you don't have to watch all those rubbish ads YouTube voices on you. So on to the next steps. Mix your original green color with a touch of yellow to make a slightly more saturated highlight, then use your detail brush to catch the areas of the trousers that were caught by the dry brush. You're not really edge highlighting, just a little touch here and there on the raised areas will help the color look a little bit more vibrant and less washed out. Going back to your original khaki flesh colour, thin it a little with water and use your detail brush to do the same thing on the face, catching the raised areas on his brow and cheeks and the top of his bald head. This will give his face some definition. To really accentuate the muscles on his body, I use the same technique as I do for my orc skin. Make tiny thin lines across the muscle with delicate small strokes, avoiding any recesses. This gives the impression of really swollen, bulging muscles. This may look a little time consuming, but the end result is actually really effective, and you get into a nice rhythm as you go, taking one muscle at a time. I added a little red into my flesh colour on the palette, and used this colour to highlight the claw in the same way, picking out the spines and the raised areas to add a bit more saturation to the area. Now we'll add some quick, cheaty rust effects to the metal elements. I created an orange by using a yellow paint with a tiny touch of red and using a packing sponge to lightly dab it onto the spikes and other metal parts. If you're going to do the step two, I'd recommend to be very sparing. A little bit goes a long way. Next, use your silver paint, not thinned at all and with quite a dry brush, to dab on random spots of wear and tarnishing onto the metal areas avoiding the recesses, and just imagining where things might have scraped or bashed into the armour and weapons. And there we go! Once this stage is complete, you can call this Ogryn done. In just over an hour, one half of the Traitor Command expansion is done, and ready to face off with the explorers in the Blackstone Fortress. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and leave a comment. We love reading them, and I try to answer them all too. Subscribe if you haven't already, and loads more cool painting tutorials on the way. I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.